There you are. Hush, they are close. I'm glad you made it. Yeah, the Nile is beautiful at sunset, isn't it? What is this device you have in your hand? Turn it off. We know their spies are good and cannot risk capture. Those lights? Yes, they are very bright and will flash occasionally. Beware. I hear footsteps. We must move, and quickly. We must protect our people at all costs, which I will do until my dying day. There she is. That's the one we're looking for. That's Aida. Every story, tale or memoir, every saga or romance, whether true or fabricated, whether planned or happenstance. Whether sweeping through the ages, casting centuries aside, or a hurry, brief recital, just a thirty-minute ride. Whether bridal, melancholy, rough and red. story, new or ancient, bagatelle or work of art, all the tales of human failing, all the tales of love.
Captain. Your country's at war. You go wandering along the Nile's edge. You must have a burning desire to see Egypt. Tie them up. Did you finish the map? Yes, Captain. Excellent. But this is wrong. The way I remember. Now, My sword! Release them! Hand it over now. You took us from Nubia. And now you say we belong to you. Yes. Yes. Well, I took this soldier from your ranks. So by your own logic, he belongs to me. Now let them go. Throw her in the river. No. I have a much better plan for her. You don't want me to remove your rope? Oh, yes. It's very impressive what you did up there. I should enlist you in my army, make you my lieutenant. Are you mocking me, Captain? No, admiring you. Now, I'm going to scrub the filth of battle from my skin. It's been a long time since I felt clean. Much better with a sword than you are a sponge. I wish I had a sword now. There's mine. Help yourself. Who taught you to use a weapon? My father. Because he knows Nubian men can't protect their women? <sighs> You're not finished. Yes, I am. You like to live life dangerously, don't you? Oh, about as much as I enjoy washing your filthy Egyptian skin. How dare you? No, you know nothing about me. And care less. How could you understand our emptiness? You plunder our wisdom, our knowledge, our wealth in bleeding us dry. You long for our spirit, but that you will never. It's now another land far beyond my reach. Invaded by insidious 
where the timeless joys of childhood lie broken on the beach. What is your name? Aida. Captain, we're ready to dock. No, please, leave it off. You're a slave now. And if you want to survive, you better remember it. Marib, Marib, is that the wine? Do you have the gold? Hello, Marib. Master, I'm so glad you're home. Have you kept my house in order? Yes, of course. Well, except for a few casks of wine, which have mysteriously disappeared. Marib, again? There you are, my son. Home at last. Step aside, Marib. Yes, O oh, Chief Minister Zozer, beloved by the gods, the people, oh, and above all, himself. Careful, boy, or I'll have you. It's nice to see you too, father. You've been gone so long, Radames. I'm starting to worry. You weren't injured in battle, were you? No, sir. Good. I was telling the princess that no man could best you with a sword. No man did. Though a certain woman might have. Ha! Really? Listen, listen. Beyond the fifth cataract, the Nile heads directly towards Khartoum. Then we can take the city by water. Excellent. You recorded the landscape. With the maps that we made, an illiterate foot soldier can make their way through Nubia. <laughs> and you brought home captives. Good. Take them to the copper mines. We can't seem to keep them alive down there. <laughs> Stop! Not this one. I'm going to need a gift for the princess. Yes, yeah, she'll be expecting something. Take them all to the palace groundskeeper. They can help with the harvest. They're women. They wouldn't survive a day underground. As you wish, they are your slaves. Thank you. Give me your hands, Aida. Your name is Aida. Marum. I'm going to remove these, but just know, if you dare try to escape, I will come after you myself. You flatter me, Captain. 
You don't look like a man who would chase after any woman. For you, I'll make an exception. Marib, take Aida to Princess Omneris with my compliments. Yes, Captain. You've been gone six months, Radames. I do believe a personal appearance is in order. In good time, Father. But just know, as soon as my crew is rested, we will be setting out again. But you can't! Radames, Egypt needs you now. The Pharaoh is not the powerful leader he was before you left. While you've been away devoting matters here I moved the pace. Now I need you home supporting all the plans I've put in place. First of all, this means your wedding. You'll recall your future bride. For the way the pharaoh's edging, time's no longer on our side. According to the hard god Horus, our most regal invalid. It's not that much longer for us. Build another pyramid. You mean the pharaoh's fallen ill? I'm afraid so. I must go visit him. Good. That will bring him some comfort. I'll see you tonight at the banquet, Captain. There are many who will be tearful as our leader fades away. But our architects are cheerful and each dog must have its day. If our country is to flourish, then my son must take the lead. Our inspiration nourish All our hopes, our dreams, our creed Soon no matter heart will have failed a tune Just like his fathers did Summon Egypt's greatest builders free Another people live Time for mourning, but for now put plans on hold. For I give the nation warning that before the corpse is cold, we'll extend fair Egypt's powers, Egypt's glory, strength, and style. We shall have our finest hour far beyond the mighty Nile. He must have the fault that's grand by. And he stand a floor to live Put five thousand slaves on standby Build another pyramid Build it, build it Build it, build it Build it, build it Build it Someone has been informing the Pharaoh of our secret meetings Traitor! He has become a liability. Put some more arsenic in the Pharaoh's wine at the banquet tonight. Again, only a few drops. We don't want him to die just yet.
why you look like a handmaiden. But hey, at least the captain saw that you're special. What that man sees and understands could be etched into a grain of sand. <laughs> that may be true, but Rodimus did save you and the other women from the copper mines. That was surprising and, and decent of him. <laughs> when I was 10, Rodimus saved me from being beaten to death by the palace guards. He promised he'd look out for me from then on, and he's kept that promise. <sighs> look, I, I know what you're thinking, that, that I've become one of them. But, but I'm still Nubian. I'll, I'll always be Nubian. Of course. I grew up in your hometown. At least began to grow. I hadn't got to my first shave before the body blow. Egyptians in the courtyard, my family in chains. You witnessed our abduction, which possibly Keep your secret. No. You must not tell anyone who I am. From now on, I am nothing but a gift. From an Egyptian captain to his princess. Just so you know, Amneris is more than that to Rodimus. She's. She's his betrothed. He's to be married? When? <laughs> the day his ship sinks and the royal builders finally refuse to make him another. Here, let's get you to the princess. such hard work maintaining perfection, but worth the effort. Don't you think? Oh, oh yes. Yes. Oh, so perfect. Perfect. <laughs> really? Perfect? 
Then maybe one of you can explain to me why Radames, the man destined to be my one and only, is neglecting me. He's been to see my father. I hear he spent time with his father. In fact, he's probably chummed it up with every withered old man in Egypt. But clearly, visiting a princess with fabulous hair leaves him cold. Oh, Amaris! First in beauty, wisdom, and accessories. Captain Rodimace has not forgotten you. He knows you'll be at the feast tonight in all of your extravagant finery, and he can hardly wait. But for now, he sends you this gift. <laughs> Another handmaiden? I don't need another handmaiden. Does this gift have a name? Aida. <gasps> Did you just speak? My name is Aida, princess, and I thought you might want to know- <laughs> How dare you? You do not lower your eyes. You do not tremble. Are you not afraid of me? Would it please you if I were? Not so much. Then I'm doing as you please. Well, that's true. You were saying something about? Captain Radames. <laughs> what do you know of the captain? Only that he is well. He suffered no injuries in battle, and I thought you might want to know that. <laughs> I did. I've been so... Uh... <laughs> You're very astute, aren't you, Aida? Only on occasion. My true talent lies within a needle, and if you would allow me, princess, I will make you a robe in a shade of that closer to your eyes. There's a dyeing process I know which makes fabrics glow. It's a secret that was passed down from the handmaidens of Queen Nefertiti. A slave who knows her fabrics? Oh, I'm keeping her! <laughs> Radames, he knows me. He really, really knows me. Go, Marab. Go show Aida to the sewing room. All right, ladies, let's polish this gem. In life, one has to face a huge assortment of nausea getting fat and good advice. There's health and fitness diet and deportment and other pointless forms of sacrifice. Conversation, wit, I am a doubter. Man is charm, there's no way to impress. So forget the inner me, observe the outer. I am what I wear and how I dress. Oh, now I believe in the looking like my time on earth is cooking. Whether hope you died, it's right or even checked with some glamour guaranteeing every fiber of my being is displayed to quite remarkable effect from your cradle Not 
Is pleased with my gift? Yes, so Aida managed to make herself indispensable in record time. I'm not surprised. Mero, did Aida tell you anything about herself? Because I, I can't help but wonder where is she? No, nothing. She, she said nothing. It is now. Your expedition. It went well? Yes. We got well past the territory of Aswan. Really? That sounds scenic. Maybe next time I'll go with you. If you'd like, Princess, we sleep with sand mites. <laughs> we dried monkey meat, and this time the water was so tainted we vomited for days. <laughs> then again, I'm pretty busy. Princess! The word of your arrival has spread through the Nubian camps. Your people, they welcome you. Welcome, welcome. Merit. Okay, so I told people. Aida, your people need to know. Captain, to a successful expedition. Thanks to the route you've discovered, our troops will be able to attack Nubia with overwhelming force. The gods willing this long war shall soon end with Egypt's complete and final victory. I'm Neris. Shall I continue? Whatever you think is best, Father. Radames, you came to me this morning with a request to set out on another journey. However, I have a more important mission for you. Though it may mean you can never leave Egyptian soil again, I find this will be a joyous assignment. One I would only trust a man I've long regarded to be a member of my own family with. It's been my honor to serve you, Your Majesty. As you all know, Captain Rodames and my daughter have been betrothed for nine years now. 
Long enough, I'd say. I want to see them and this nation happily settled before I leave. Therefore, in seven days, Captain Rodimus, son of Zozer, will wed thee, Princess Amneris. <coughs> the son of Isis has spoken. Toast to the bridegroom. If I knew such an awkward girl would have turned into such a beautiful young woman, I would have offered for her myself. It's not too late. But I thought you loved down there. Of course I do. We grew up together. Then what is it? Radames, I have spent years working towards this day, and you are not going to ruin it for yourself. For me. Welcome to your new life, son. Nothing is an accident. We are free to have it all. We are what we want to be. It's in ourselves to rise above. This is easy to believe. When distant places come to me, it's harder from the palace yard. Fortune favors the free. No, stay. Yes, Captain. Where are you from? Ekaita. It is a village near, near the, the second, second cataract. cataract. The water is an entirely different color there. No, it's an entirely different color here. <laughs> Fair enough. My father and I used to spend days sailing the Nile. He'd let me choose the course and sometimes I'd even run us aground on purpose. Whenever I wanted to see something on the shore. Did you ever sail north? No. My father felt the first cataract being so close to the border of Egypt was too dangerous a place to take him in. But there are no Egyptians at the first cataract. Only those tiny grassy islands. And the sunlight is different there. In Egypt it's direct and, and harsh. But there it shimmers. It's the most beautiful place I've ever seen. Of course. It's Nubia. Like to see that part of my country. To sail away to half discovered places. To see the secrets so few eyes have seen. To see moments of enchantment on our faces. The moments when we smile. And those between. Are you talking about Nubia now? Yeah, in, in a way. If I could leave this place, then I'd go sailing to corners of my land where there would be sweet southern winds of liberty prevailing. The beauty so I'll take you sailing south. You could be my guide. Would you let me steer? Would you run us aground? Oh yes, wherever there are no people, I'd jump out of the boat, kick off my sandals, and I'd run! <laughs> and there'd be no one there to scold me and tell me to behave like a prince. To behave. Ties of time and space to bind me. And no horizon line could not pursue. I'd leave the world's misfortunes far behind me. I'd put my faith and trust in something new. 
I hardly know it all and should forget a journey we can only dream of. Enchantment passing through. And how is it I say these things so easily to you? This is meaningless. I'll never take you sailing. I'm never going to leave Egypt again. I'll send men up on their expeditions while I sit on the throne. You talk as though you've been enslaved. Maybe not with chains, but with a marriage promise. Oh, what is that for? Oh, to dry my weeping eyes. Forced to marry a princess. Oh, what, oh, what hardships. I know. You want to go to lands where people have been living for centuries and say that you discovered them, but Instead, you are being thrust onto the Pharaoh's throne. Oh, it is a great tragedy. You go too far. No, you go too far. If you don't like your fate, change it. You are your own master. There are no shackles on you. So don't expect pity or understanding from this humble palace slave. Stop. I command you to stop. But why? A stranger I just met, a woman who I hardly know at all. And to forget, anonymous and gone tomorrow. Enchantment passing through, and all I've done is tell her things that she already. Me. How is your father? I don't understand it. This illness of his came on so suddenly. Weeks ago he was healthy and the court physicians, they have no idea what it is. Well, it was a magnificent feast, wasn't it? Yes, princess. Oh, there is so much to do to get ready for this wedding ceremony. From the bronze entry statue of me to centerpieces of Lilies and roses arranged to look like me. <laughs> it must be difficult. Planning a wedding? No, being a princess. Oh, you have no idea. The responsibilities are just overwhelming. Your people must expect so much from you. They want a goddess, and I'm just- Human. I may leave a great impression as I race through a succession of the latest crazes chase the newest fad. I feel better when I'm beguiling, find that fashion keeps me smiling, but in my heart I know it's rather sad. That a life of great potential is dismissed inconsequential and only ever seen as being cute. So I'll flutter to the sea. Oh no, 
Now you must believe that one day you're bound to find a stronger suit. Ronimate! This is my bed chambers. You can't just... You know you shouldn't. <laughs> Aida, leave. No, stay. Pour the princess a cup of wine. Are you trying to get me drunk, Radames? You know, it's not necessary. <laughs> Is that your bed in there? Silk covered and fat with feathers. Why don't you go in and I'll join you in a moment? But, Radames, we're going to be married in a week. We've been engaged nine years. <laughs> Good point. You think you could speak to me like that? Scold me like a shrew, then just leave? You forget I can have you carry it off to the copper mines. And you forget that I'm her property now, not yours. It doesn't matter, because I know you're right. What? <laughs> I'm shocked. Even an enlightened Nubia, one never hears a man admit when he's wrong. Rodimus, I'm ready. I'll be right in, princess. Aida, listen, I was wrong. I've been selfish. If Farah does not recover, Egypt is going to need a new leader, a strong leader. And I'm afraid that's not a nurse. Oh, Radames, come and claim your kingdom. <laughs> you should go to her. Were you a noble woman before you were captured? What does it matter? There's nothing noble about me now. You're wrong. You are noble and courageous. Very few of us dare to speak so freely and so honestly, and considering you're a slave. Yes. We mustn't ever forget that I am a slave. Aida, I cannot take back the past. But even if I could, I'm not sure I'd want to. Aida, I... Rodimus! Uh-oh. You barge into my bedchambers, waging a frontal attack, so to speak, and you're stalling. Why? I'm sorry, princess. I, I didn't realize. <laughs> there is a buck-naked princess lounging in her bed, calling your name. What exactly didn't you realize? Before our wedding night, go ahead and pack up some of that dry monkey meat and have the royal photographer draw you a map of the female body, Captain. Maybe then you'll be more inclined to come explore. something I said? <laughs> oh, when we were children, we understood each other so well, and now he's a mystery to me. Aida, there you are. Will you come with me? Where? The Nubian slave camp. Look, everyone knows that I'm the one who can go and get things, and our people, they've, they've asked me to bring them. You. Why? So they can see a reckless fool dressed up as a servant? Aida, you know that- This is what I am, Merib. My father told me not to leave the boundaries of our country, but, but I could not be so constrained. I took Nehebka and the other woman up the river. I, I had to see the countryside, and that is where the Egyptians captured us. I deserve this. And our people deserve a leader who thinks of herself, not of her own selfish pleasures. Aida, the Nubians want their princess. It's knowing what they want of me that scares me it's knowing having followed i must lead it's knowing that each person there compares me to those in our past who might now succeed but how 
Can whatever I do for them now be enough? Be I don't know what you mean. 
Do you think you're going to gain your freedom just because you've gained my attention? You're beautiful, but I am not easily led. I've looked in your direction, Captain. It was only to see if your chalice needed filling. I have no chalice now. Yet you're still looking. Excuse me, Captain, but I have linen to wash. I do not excuse you. You wanted something from me? Yes. I want to make your life easier. How do I help you? Help my people. I want to help you. I am my people. And I cannot continue to sit in the comfort of the palace while my countrymen are dying. You want my affection, Captain? I could have your affection right here if I commanded it. But it doesn't matter. I either. I want you to know if you feel anything. Aside from contempt. I, I don't know. Then let's find out. I just saw. Aida? I'm there to request your presence. The princess. You're betrothed!
Look, he's preparing to move into the palace. So, whatever, whatever doubts he had the other night, it must be gone. But I uh, stay and apologize for me. Oh, no, I can't. Yes, you can. You always say the right thing. I, I never do. Please, Princess, please don't make me. I would never make you, but I'm asking you as my friend. Thank you. It was nothing. Well, actually, it was everything. But it doesn't matter. Captain, I came to tell you that the princess is sorry about what she said the other night, and she wanted you to know that... Anita. You were betrothed to my mistress. It was arranged by my father, and will be unarranged by me. You could raid another country tomorrow and rebuild your fortune. Radames, you're an Egyptian! Nothing will ever change that fact. I, I don't even know why you bothered to do this. Don't you? We all lead such elaborate lives. Wild ambitions in our sight. How an affair of the heart survives days apart and hurried nights seems quite unbelievable to me. I don't want to live like that Seems quite unbelievable to me I don't want to love like that I just want a time to be Slower and gentler Wiser Free We all live in extravagant times Playing games we can't all win Unintended emotional crimes Take others in I'm so tired of all we're going through I don't want to live like that I'm so tired of all we're going through I don't want to love like that I just want to be
I want to be a new man for you, Aida. Reborn and cleansed of my past sins. What is that? It sounded the drums. My armies have returned. Pharaoh will be expecting me at the ceremony. Go to the palace. You'll be safe there. Wait. Take my amulet. If anybody gives you trouble, show them that and they'll let you pass. I love you. I heard that. <laughs> Say it again. I command you. Captain. I heard the drums. We have captured the Nubian king. You've taken him alive. Yes, Captain. Find which men are responsible for this. I'll see they receive the highest honor. Yes, Captain. Aida, our countries are at war. I cannot change that fact. But he's my fa- He's my king. through the streets with my own eyes. I heard he's offering me been executed. I heard that they were carrying his head throughout the city or the end of a spot. No, no. King Amanazra of Nubia is alive. I, I saw him taken to the prison. <laughs> but it is only a matter of time before the Egyptians slaughter him. I have always imagined your father would march through Egypt in triumph. But now we have no hope. When the king dies, so does Nubia. No, Nubia will never die. Whether we are enslaved or whether we are far from our native soil, Nubia will live in our hearts. And therefore, it lives. Passing aberration, it washes. 